So, uh, I'm going to be talking about building reusable components, uh, Kiftabni components, uh, and how to use the buses in hand, or to use them after the model application. Uh, I'm going to be giving examples of the project that I worked on by Google or by Majna. Oh, I forgot my mic. Sorry. <laughs> Um, all right, so the word of warning, Adam Alalish, I just busted my first button little pants, so apologies if I like my pants fall off. <laughs> uh, all right, <laughs> give me warning. So um, uh, I should have got spare pants. I got spare t-shirts, but I didn't get spare pants. All right, uh, my name is Muhammad Khatib, best uh, Google Web developer. Currently, I'm building a thing called SolforX. dot com. Um, it's a platform for like a feature. I'm in hot on the المشاريع ال ال المستقبلية بشكل كبير. The moon shots, we call them. But not from Google, from outside Google, or actually inside Google and outside Google. So, um, and I'm also contributing to Manchester.org or dot com. Uh, it's an open source project we started. You can get me like on Twitter or Google Plus. Uh, I'm pretty active on Google Plus. I'm trying to get back into Twitter. All right, I now I get the car, but all right. Um, so, Haka uh, Haka. Ferris on the directives. Uh, what I'm, um, you saw ng app uh, talking about the um, well, uh, ng init, uh, ng model, ng click, ng repeat. Had all of them home directives. Had all directives already provided um, in the Angular, in Angular library itself. Um, so you can use them uh, once you include Angular. Um, what I'm going to talk about is actually um, ah, is actually building your own directives. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so um, And um, first, uh, when do we use directives to build like our own? Like whenever, like we talked about services, hakeen and controllers, hakeen and had services, hakeen. For example, when you want to uh, centralize data traffic, so uh, usually is a data to access the data, you access it through a service. So you build a service and to access. The sorry, the controller connects the model to services with the view tag. The directives basically any time you want to access or touch, talk to the DOM. Uh, HTML لما ده لما بتشوف لك جيكوي مثلا أو get element by the أي وقت بتلاقي حالك عم تعمل get element by the controller عم تعمل إشي غلط stop and use directive uh, right away أي وقت بتحس إنه you're touching an element don't touch it build a directive and touch it there okay so why um, basically multiple things um, reusability um, I'm gonna show you how the exams have been mana but لما فارس بنا مثلا فارس tag الفارس الامج وهو حاب يحطها اكثر من مكان في الويب سايت تاعه بعرفش ليه بس um, apparently he loves himself too much I'm not gonna ask for clapping by the way <laughs> um, so um, so he bought Faris tag and he used it multiple times and that's that's reusable um, and encapsulation um, Uh, basically, until you can expose Tati any parameter to the directive that you want to write, and the other people is able to put it on the other application that you want to write, or put it on the web, and the other people use it, and you can expose specific attributes that you can do with set. For example, the tag of Faris, you can put it on the avatar. أو تعطيها أتريبيوت للنيم والنيم هذا إذا كان فارس ببين صورة فارس إذا كان محمد ببين صورة محمد إذا كان رشا ببين صورة رشا Um, all right, um, and it, it also um, uh, it, it'll clean your code. You're like, is as I'm all it is I let Halak to do the controllers. Had you seen a lot of trouble with DOM? It cleans it up. It removes it from the controller and it puts it in the directive. All right, examples. Hot uh, examples in both Solve X and Muncher. Um, and we're gonna show snippets. We'll use a, we'll use cases. So, for example, the software X I built. So we we had a need. Can we do tags uh, field? We can do the tags. So when you click on the tag field, it'll give you um, a drop down list. And how did that come in back in Bardo an admin set set? Um, and then it adds uh, to the list, and you can delete these tags if you want. If you click the X. And you can see it, we're using it everywhere. Like we're using it on a bit, the wizard. We're using it the um, uh, the challenges set. We have another another view. So we're using it all all around the website. Um, and the way and the way we use it instead of building the HTML blocks every uh, every time, we just call tags list. It's a directive, right? I created the directive. I'll have to look if I create like you create this kind of uh, skeleton. But I created directive. And for example, you can. Uh, um, Add an attribute, expose an attribute called edit enabled, and um, 
what basically that expose is um, you can pass it um, an expression, and that expression is going to be evaluated like true or false. And if it's true, the logic tag, okay, add the field, or put the x's, down the tags, so you can see the tags, and you can see the tags. Another, um, another um, attribute we're exposing as well is kind, which is you can pass a string, and that string you can pass it to the service that you have in the back end, and you can see the tags specifically. So if you have a tag, you can see the problems, for uh, example, climate change or a global warming a problem that you, you can you can list it all if you're using a general tag like technology or chemistry you can pass a, um, another tag like another kind and all the logic is inside your directive um, okay I don't have an example uh, implementation home but I'm gonna talk in, 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 in the next one or the next at, at least one sure okay uh, so this is another example for a directive I built, uh, and what it does is uh, it allows the user to uh, beef um, users or organizations the project down. So in the project page, um, so it allows you, it will show you auto complete. I mean, I mean, the users who are already signed up on the website, and even on the website, you have suggestions from the plus profiles if you want to add people who are not on the, on the website yet. And same with, with organizations. So I'm adding instead of myself, and I'm adding my team. Um, and it's the same thing. You just say member list is a that to expose edit enabled. I know this was our case. You know we wanna we wanna have an edit um, kind of view, or we wanna have um, just a viewable. You know as an information admin, or you don't have access to edit, you shouldn't see all these things. You just see the list. Um, and you can pass it also, for example, kinds. Uh, I don't know if can you say kinds. I don't know. It's plural. Um, anyway, so I'm passing it. For example, I want users plus uh, OG plus and organization. So this will pull uh, from all these um, sources. And users and organizations, for example, is basically is calling our service. So for X. Um, and list, uh, getting these users has to be the user. Uh, plus, it's calling an external API on Google Plus or on Facebook. I was here to get it from from there. Um, another example is uh, an interactive map directive. So this is the whole thing is a directive, right? Um, and this is the code, for example, you can use it. So in Moonshots map, Moonshots is like what we call the projects. Um, Moonshots map. And you can pass it, for example, interactive, autoplay. Autoplay was like, it'll start actually moving around um, and show you projects around the, the thing. And show card equal true, which is like that card for the project. So yeah, that's another example for directives. All right. So these are like, these are cool. I think it explains why you should use directives. Um, now, how do you build that? Shift to Faris Haka. You use so this is you have your app. I'm gonna pull my pants up. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm gonna um, access my app, the my uh, Angular app, and then um, I'm gonna use a directive function or a method um, to create directive. You pass it a name and you pass it the function, which is uh, gonna return the definition, uh, what we call a directive definition object, uh, DDO. Um, and we'll see an example. Okay. So this is a general example. It's just like my directive and all that. Um, the first four lines is how we call it, HTML Tana. So my directive, uh, and uh, if you notice, I'm using a lot, like I'm, I'm using a tag name as uh, the directive name, but you could use, uh, and we, can, we will see it here, but restrict, you can use uh, uh, attribute, um, which is say, for example, in my directive. Um, and you could use um, class and comment, say, Faris Mahaka. Um, the most common is actually an attribute, an attribute, um, but you could use uh, an element as well. Um, all right, so the way we define it is look at the name, my dash directive, and look at the name we provided, the like, definition that directive. It's, it's a cap like camel case, right? Um, and the Angular automatically translate uh, any camel case, it'll add a dash, and then uh, you can use a, 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 a your uh, HTML. The definition itself, this is the, the object hada, nam rajo, is a DDO, a directive definition object. And uh, we'll still need to restrict the usage of hada directive, lal e, in e lihi ala element. So nobody can use it using a class or using an attribute. You have to type it as a tag my directive, right? And close it, for example. Um, if you, if you, you can add actually multiple things, so you could say EA, 
and they could use it this way, or uh, they could provide it as an attribute. Layer yeah, um, stands for attribute. Um, require um, you can require whatever you want, like require a specific attribute, or require, for example, in this case, we're requiring a model, ng model. Um, to be provided. If they didn't provide, it's gonna error. Or it's gonna tell them we need the model. Um, and then there is scope. This is, by the way, not all the attributes, but I'm like just showing um, most common use. Uh, scope is uh, you can. So if you pass a scope, um, we talked about scope shortly. But kul kul um, block fil angular kul um, whenever you use a directive or a controller, it has its own scope. And there is there's global scope we call uh, root scope. Um, the Angular will bubble up most of the time to read is a actual variable, but a local scope will bubble up. The variables with JavaScript. If you define something global, it'll read it if it's not um, available locally with local scope. So the same thing. Uh, if we pass it, it's going to create um, what we call an isolated scope. Um, so Hadol uh, attributes. Um, available in the Hadi directive, but it's not going to be available in the Libra. It's going to be available for them to set it, to pass it. And they can bind to it. Uh, let me drink some water. Sorry. Um, uh, I'm fast. I don't know how. Are, are someone, somebody timing me? No? All right. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. Hmm. Okay. Better. Um, so um, if you see my scope is basically a name of attribute or basically part of the panel case. Uh, so dashes, panel case, with JavaScript. Um, I'm passing a string, a character. Uh, what these? What does this mean? Like at and equal and and. Uh, the at uh, refers to. It uh, doesn't refer to anything, but uh, it basically means that this attribute is a value. You should take it as is. So I'm passing hello. It's going to take it as hello string. Uh, it's always going to be a string, probably. If you pass it as one, it's going to take it as one, as a string as well. The expression E means it is an expression. Please execute it or evaluate it, right? So I'm passing user dot is admin. It's gonna. It's not gonna be a string of user to that is admin. It's gonna be the value of that variable, the scope variable user to is admin. So it's it's gonna be either false or true, whatever it's gonna evaluate to. If I if I pass user to is admin the attribute, the value attribute, the first one, it's gonna read it as a string. It's not gonna read the value to Um The callback attribute is gonna be. Like an and, um, and this is basically, oh, sorry, uh, the expression you could also bind to something. So, uh, this is actually a binding expression. So, if you change in this code, like my expression attribute will function on, it's going to change the user that is admin. So, you can set it here and it'll, it'll, it'll be again two way binding. All right, um, and the and is, refers to uh, basically a callback. Like uh, this is a callback, and I want I want you to execute it in the context uh, of the scope that it's called down. So and I'm I'm babatlo, for user selected or babatlo user. So user be kun bil context that we're in currently, in the HTML, in this scope, not in the scope that we're in. Okay. So moving on, if uh, template URL, what do, what do you want me to render? Of course, you can use template and put the HTML tag on. But it's usually better to separate it, um, you know, for readability. You had this yet. Um, so my template is gonna be exist somewhere, uh, and it'll read it and render that uh, as as the HTML code. Uh, controller, you can pass a controller for a directive and do your all all your, your logic there. And then there is the link function, which is probably the most used function build directives. And what it does is basically, I'm gonna catch my breath. <laughs> Um, uh, what it does, the link function uh, actually takes few uh, five usually uh, the three, the most used three of these scope element and attributes. The scope is the scope of the element itself. Uh, so, um, sorry, the parent that added it. Um, the element is the element that I'm actually the DOM element that I'm actually uh, putting this directives on. Um, this is, might not mean um, um, a lot in this case, but if it was an attribute like ng model or ng view, the element would be the, uh, the that tag that you put it on. 
Um, and that's why I said, if you're accessing DOM in controllers, you don't, no, you access it from here, because it's passed for you. So it's, it's already fine, like found. You don't have to do get a link by ID or anything like that. The attributes is all attributes on the, on the parameter, whatever. It's, if it's a class, you can access it from here as well. All right, and how on build the link function, you do all you, whatever you want with that DOM. So you register event listener, you, you, you bind, um, click um, event, you manipulate DOM, you add DOM, whatever you want. All right, examples for directives we built for Muncher. Hmm. Okay, so um, a few cases actually we use directives then. Hmm. All right. Um, so one one use case is actually very useful for um, directives is encapsulating external libraries. So is a I'm the I'm for one shot stuff that is more grounded to JS. It's a library. It's an open source library. You can look it up. It basically gives you an editor view. Um, use line add um, il, il, uh, formatting options or had this yeah. Um, and we wanted to use it the muncher because we thought it's uh, it's a good match. Uh, so we encapsulate it using a directive um, to use it this way, and we want to use it for multiple things, right? So the mancher is if I'm a new article, you're gonna see this view and one al-maqal and one al-maqal al-faray. We put the maqal up here. Hadala placeholders. Um, when you click, you can write it here, right? The description of the HTML is It's an H1 tag. This is an H1 tag with um, a directive that we did, mancher dash editor, on it. So this is what adds the functionality to it. And what this, uh, we'll see what this does. What this does basically is call grand the API to create this. Um, you can see we'd also pass in it a lot of attributes. So like, if is it an article? Um, you want an article editor or not? What is the maximum length or what is the model you want to bind the content to? Um, is it required? And what mod do you want? You can see here, there's a mod in line and there is mod rich to give you like the formatting options. All right. Um, let's see how this is implemented. All right. So basically, we the same thing. We call it Muncher Editor, camel case, and then we require an L model, Ashan to bind it. So whatever you type the editor, Haikun and that will be available and automatically bind it to a scope variable, the controller tag, for example. And all right, uh, we restrict it as an attribute, so you can use an attribute, you can use an as an element. You could, we could. Uh, that's a um, style guide, I guess. And then, um, yeah, we pass the parameters that we're going to expose to set it, like placeholder, mod, and RTL. All of these are at, so they're going to be evaluated as is. They're not going to be actually executed. So we expect to pass a string. Um, and you can see inside the link function, we have like an upload callback. I, I don't want to show the def definition for it, but like it's basically, um, it also, like the editor also adds a, like an upload image to insert images to the editor. And this is the callback that gets called, we pass it actually like grand day somewhere here. Yeah, upload callback and we just send in the one we find here. And we pass as well, in, uh, so this is the grand day, this is how you call grand day, API down. And um, we pass an element in the Aliha, the link function. And other attributes. So it's called the placeholder is a bat, is a man bat, but for the placeholder is a mod and bat, um, default rich, default false, etc. Sounds good. So this is how um, we actually encapsulate the editor and reuse it multiple times. Um, I'm good on time. I don't know actually. Good. All right. Um, okay. So the other. Um, so again, uh, this is another example of using another uh, library co for code highlighting. So the, the editor it allows you to add the code. So this is a rendered article, and it'll highlight the code for you. So how we do this is we basically um, this is article container style article. We render it using ng bind HTML, which is another directive in Angular. But we also call highlight code directive Aliha. And what this uh, what, how how does this work is just basically again call a function which. Um, which will get the element, the first actual, all the pre, pre tags, which is what is used for rendering the code. It will get all the codes and then loop over them and call uh, the highlighter. This is the library, HLGS, the highlighter GS. I think it's from Yandex. Um, and you just call the function that they define, Ashan, to highlight these codes and blocks. 
So this is basically how it's done. Um, another use case is actually extending native tags, a file, for example. When you create an input type file in the file element, uh, we use that in Muncher, actually. If you click choose and you, you choose um, a picture, we want to uh, preview it, for example, and we show it to you right away. We don't upload. So we locally preview it, um, and we also want it to bind it to a, a local variable, right? Uh, it's not easy. There is no direct way to do it in Angular, so we built our own directive for that. Okay, I'll show you quickly how we did this. Is um, so Muncher file is the, the name of the directive. So we just add an attribute Muncher file, uh, yeah, input file, and we pass it two uh, scope variables: a uh, file mode model, sorry, and the preview URL, which is going to be uh, binded to whatever URL you want to view it to. Um, yeah, I forgot to add HTML, how we use it in HTML, I believe, I just remembered. But um, this is the implementation, so we just listened on change, so this is the element, and we added an event listener. Again, this is, you can do here, uh, event listener is no manipulation, it's here. So we listen to change uh, for like the file tag, um, and then we get the first file selected, uh, read it using file reader, it's an API from the browsers, it's new, but like it's supported. And then um, you read it, you read it as data URL, so you read it locally, you read the file in the browser, and you set preview URL to the result type, and that's like, it's, it's gonna be a data URL. I don't know, are you very familiar with data to URLs? It's basically Kishim Kharbash. Uh, but about the browser we found how better are like an image. And then we set the model as well. So the file model we passed, we set it to the selected file, and then we access wherever we want. Basically, wh why I want the access is when we save the article, it also uploads this file because in the same model, so it, it actually saves it in the database. All right, um, another use case. If I'm doing it all the time, stop me if I'm not. Uh, custom events. Um, so if you wanna, um, so there is like for example directives for clicking, ng click, ng uh, key press. Adol mojadin marafin in Angular. But is that the click We have a use case actually both in SolveRx and in Muncher to to listen to something when you click outside an element, right? So. And, and the, uh, the use cases are, for example, in SolveRx, um, when I click on the user um, icon, it will show me the, um, the card tattoo. If I click outside that card, I want it to disappear, right? So there is no way, like, there is no uh, event for that. So that's why we created that directive. Same thing with Muncher. When I click, if you look at an article, you'll see uh, comments on the side. And when you click on comments, it'll show you the comment. But when I click outside that, I want it to disappear. I want it to go back. So. The directive for that is this. It's very simple, actually. Um, we actually inject document, which is another Angular service. You don't have to inject it because you can use just document ladia, um, you know, the browser document. The reason why uh, it's good to use usually Angular provides a document, a window, a dollar sign window, dollar sign document, in, is um, testing, basically. So when you test your code against uh, Angular provides an easy way to mock these variables. And um, Omar is going to talk more about testing uh, and mocking in general. Um, so we have documents. And we bind the click function on. Uh, sorry, we bind the element the click. Uh, and we just stop it. We don't want you to do anything. Then if I click the same element, I want it. I don't want it to do anything. But if you click outside it, which is anywhere in the document itself, I want it to do something. And that this is actually cool because I'm passing uh, an expression here uh, as an attribute. I access it through attribute, not even scope. I access it from click outside, and it's going to be click dash outside, and an expression that's probably going to be a function or actually any expression. And it's gonna apply it. It's gonna basically execute it. Uh, I don't have that channel code for it, but that's that's basically how you use it. You just say click outside dash outside, and for example, set a variable to false, hidden true, مثلا, and that would do it. Um, that's I think all the example I have. Uh, you could check Angular Jazz documentation, a little more like about uh, directives specifically uh, with DDO and directive uh, uh, object. Um, that's all. Yeah. Uh, do we have time for questions? Do you guys have any questions? I was pretty clear, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, uh, seriously, no. I know it's a lot of to take in. Yeah. Uh, with things like with the 
Awesome question. Uh, so web components, we have another actually talk uh, on web components, Russia is going to give it after launch, I think. Um, so check it out, Polymer and web components. Um, and it's basically new standard for the browser to kind of build the, uh, allow you to encapsulate had the shell like don't stick library tiny as angular. So my guess is it's going to go away eventually because I think Angular 2 is still going to be there. They're changing the DDO though. I think the directive, the object, definition object, thank you. <laughs> the directive, uh, definition object is going to change a little bit, the Angular 2. Um, but it's, I think directives are still going to be there. Um, but they're going to use, like, they're going to probably heavily use um, web components. If you if you look at Angular 2, they're going to promote web, uh, web components. The, the way you actually define the directives are going to be using uh, web components APIs. So, yeah. Yes. Um, Angular with multi languages. So, uh, localization, right? Internationalization. Okay. Um, so, we have, they have a module called I. Uh, internationalization i18n.js so if you uh, you can include in your app it's a separate module but it's built by the angular team uh, and maintained by angular um, so if you include it it provides a lot of helper functions like for example if you use the date filter it'll easily actually use it in angular as well the, we, we include the arabic the, so they have arabic um, file js file to kind of map uh, dates will format to uh, and we use it by angular uh, by Manchur. Um, to like file uh, date in Arabic and can um, the first or can the So we didn't implement that. We just used the date and we included the international. So they have some support. They're promising a much better support than Angular 2. Um, but currently, yeah, you, they have some support for currencies. I think Yamsafir actually uses currency a lot. If you go to Yamsafir website and try to book something, you can change the currency and it'll change right away. So they're using, I think, these, some of these um, kind of internationalization tools. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It will only execute once when you, uh, when you like, so ARM get parsed and like an Angular get executed, like the main, like bootstrap, sorry. So there is something called, we build bootstrap Angular app. When that is executed, I believe the link would be executed. There is, I think, um, Two other functions uh, to do pre-link and uh, post-link. If you want to do something, Abelma, Abelma link, uh, like you want to prepare the DOM or do something or do some calculations, uh, you could do it there. The other functions I didn't mention them because I, I'm, I've never used them. But yeah, it should ex only ex uh, of course uh, 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 once per element you're using it. So for example, Manchal editor, we use it three times. It's going to execute three times. That's cool matter a different instance. Yeah, different scope, different uh, whatever. Anything else? Cool. Awesome. Uh, next, uh, do we take a break, Krisha? Uh, okay, uh, five minutes, uh, ten minutes break. Kashan has seen us as well. Should sort array in descending order failed. Expected 581 to equal 851. Now we're going to go. The browser is going to take 300 milliseconds. Why? The system knows that if you did it, you did a click or a swipe or any other thing. So they're going to be able to get out of it.